Hello and welcome to Turf Truth Tuesday where we look at claims in the turf grass industry and ask, are they true? If you're new to the channel you may like to subscribe to be notified of new content. Thank you so much for joining us on the last episode of Season 1. If there is one problem in turf grass management that seems to never go away, it is soil compaction. Soil compaction may be a result of physical or chemical processes. But, when most people think of soil compaction, it is physical compaction caused by vehicle or foot traffic. Physical compaction requires physical solutions. However, that has not stopped bullshitters from spreading misinformation to convince you that their products will aerate the soil and alleviate soil compaction. Let's take a look. Gypsum is a great product to reduce soil compaction. Lots of times people do not like core aeration because of the messy plugs. This is a great alternative. It can provide that reduction of soil compaction, open up pore space to allow for a thicker, fuller, lusher turf that you achieve with aeration, but in a different process. Aerate, what is it? Basically what it is, is how it sounds. It's an alternative to mechanical aeration in a liquid form. There are also numerous websites that spread this bullshit. The really good bullshitters include some factual information first, like we see here about core aeration. Then they weave in their bullshit. Good nature claims that liquid aeration can be as effective or better than core aeration. Most professional turf managers can sniff out this bullshit from a mile away, but the average homeowner cannot. Here is another from Simple Lawn Solutions. Forgo spike shoes and mechanical aeration? This may sound ridiculous to a professional, but generally homeowners do not have expertise in turf, and some companies have no problem taking advantage of them. John Perry. Let's hear what you've got. Um, Matt uh, Martin did a wonderful breakdown of aerate versus some other things using sort of active ingredients and breaking it down. So I'm not going to whiteboard it. That's been done. So um, check out the grass factor for that. You can do a little search on the aerate and get really scientific with it, which is cool. Wait. What? The grass factor already covered liquid aeration? Let's go see what Matt has to say. Liquid aerations are scams. What? Wait. John, you just told your audience to go watch a video that said. Liquid aerations are scams. Did we miss something? Matt, have you considered liquid aeration products compared with mechanical aeration? Only one can perform all three of these tasks. That is a mechanical aeration, and therefore, liquid aeration is a scam. So John, let's understand this. You sell a liquid aeration product, and you tell your viewers to go watch a video that provides evidence that your product is a scam? Any experienced turf manager knows your claims are some of the best examples of bullshit in the industry, but you are making this way too easy on us. Let's move on. Bullshitters love to use phrases like, you have hard soils, your magnesium saturation is too high, or you need to apply gypsum to bust up the clay and to open up your soil. The problem when we have lots of those tiny little molecules, those tiny little magnesium molecules, we have tight, wet soils where we don't have good drainage, we have poor root growth, we have low oxygen levels, and that's all bad for crop production, and it also means more soil compaction. See, now that's some bullshit. Today we're getting a bit of gypsum out on the garden to uh, help bust up the clay that's underneath. He's talking bullshit. Although compacted soils are very difficult to grow turf grass in, apparently, compact soils are the ideal conditions to grow bullshitters. So today we are taking a look at soil compaction. Let's get started. The late Dr. James Beard defined soil compaction as, an increase in the soil bulk density, and concomitantly a decrease in the soil porosity due to the application of mechanical forces to the soil. Mathematically, bulk density is defined as the mass of dry soil divided by the bulk volume. In layman's terms, compaction is what occurs when the same mass is compressed into a smaller space. This can occur from foot traffic, vehicle traffic, or by other means. A healthy, non-compacted soil contains about 50% solid and 50% void space. Of that void space, about 50% should be water, and 50% should be air. Organic matter percentages vary, but are commonly between 1 and 5%. Let's look at what occurs when a force is applied to the soil surface. As we see, the more the vehicle drives over the soil surface, the more the soil is compressed into a smaller volume. When compression occurs, the bulk density increases and drainage is reduced as the volume of macropores is reduced. Ultimately, it is the soil's inability to drain excess water and allow for root penetration, that often manifests itself in reduced turf grass growth and playability. Soil compaction is so important that it is the primary reason why USGA spec greens are constructed with sands, because sands can resist compaction and have a larger percentage of macropores than clays. 
So, when soil particles have been physically compressed, are there any products that we can apply that would alleviate this? Let's take a look. Aerate, what is it? Basically what it is, is how it sounds. It's an alternative to mechanical aeration in a liquid form. Now the cool thing about this product is what it's going to do once you apply it is it's gonna get, is that it's gonna get down into the soil, start breaking bonds, start cracking open that soil in small scale levels. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow air, water, and nutrients to better penetrate the soil surface. Let's take this opportunity to explain exactly what bullshit is. Bullshit is what occurs when people talk about topics that they have little to no knowledge of. Jake does not know if what he is saying is true, nor does he care. That is the essence of bullshit. Communication with indifference to truth. Many soil aeration products result in increased water penetration. But, it is not due to alleviation of compaction. This is due to the products acting as soil wetting agents, and the salesmen know it. In fact, they know it so well that the more experienced bullshitters confront and attempt to refute this critique head-on. Now, one thing that I should point out, because it's come up in other conversations, is the concept of, is this working like a wetting agent and making water wetter? Well, no. Well, yes. Many products will have the surfactant listed on the label. Perhaps our favorite is Aerify Plus. They actually list the word magic on the ingredients. At least they put their bullshit up front where you can get a good strong whiff of it. However, Aerate is more clever. Aerate does not actually contain a surfactant, so in that sense, John is being truthful. But, what he conveniently omits is that the components of aerate react to form an adjuvant. But how would an average consumer know that? Who might be able to explain this? Check out the grass factor. Okay. Let's let the grass factor explain. What we have run into with this type of product is a saponification reaction. Simply put, saponification reactions produce anionic soaps or surfactants, one of the things you can do is Google a potassium humate soap, and you'll see bars of soap and different stuff that exists out there. So, the claim that liquid aeration products do not act as wetting agents is bullshit. And those who continue with this nonsense are... Almost literally exploding with bullshit. Thanks, George. What about the other components in liquid aeration products? Do they do anything besides light in your wallet? Let's hear some of their claims. It starts to break down things that are tied up even in a spray type solution um, when you have caked on items. So it does the same thing in the soil. When that happens, you're creating all of this extra space. It's, it's breaking little bonds, creating space, breaking bonds, creating space all over the place. So you get that air movement, hence the air eight. We have no evidence to convince us that what John is saying is true. But even if everything he is saying is true, let's see what would happen. When liquid aeration products are applied to a compacted soil, soil moisture distribution may increase. Organic material may even be reduced. But even if all of this occurred, none of this will alleviate the compaction problem. As we see if we remove all the water and organic matter, the mass of solids within the given volume of soil has not changed, meaning the bulk density has not changed. In addition, there is the issue of dosage. Even if the products performed exactly as John claims, which we have no evidence to indicate they do, you still need to apply enough of it to make an impact. John knows this. Let's hear his response to the concern that aerate will influence pH. So the one thing to note about um, aerate is that its pH is super high. And there's some people that have concern about that. Like, well, isn't that going to uh, change my soil pH if I already have high pH soils? And no, you need to think about it like we're putting ounces of material out per thousand feet, gallons per acre, figure 16 pounds of material total per acre, maybe as much as 24 pounds per acre. This 16 to 24 pounds of material is not going to make a difference in a liquid. So just think about that for a second. We don't have to think about it. You just debunked yourself. Your product is applied at such a low rate that it will not influence soil pH, but it will aerate the soil. Sounds like magic. Clearly, liquid aeration products will have no influence on physical soil compaction. Now let's switch directions here and talk a little about chemical compaction. For the purposes of this video, our definition of chemical compaction is the increase in soil bulk density as a result of either sodium or magnesium. Sodic soils can be difficult to grow turf grass on, due to many issues, one of them being poor drainage. This occurs due to dispersion of clay flocules. Flocculation occurs when two clay platelets come into close proximity to each other, and the cations on the platelet's surface attract the negative charge on both platelets. In this fashion, the cation acts as a bridge holding the platelets together. The strength of this bond is a function of the element's charge and hydration radius. Because calcium has two positive charges, it is capable of holding both platelets together. 
However, if sufficient sodium is introduced, the divalent calcium will be replaced with the monovalent sodium resulting in the clay platelets being repelled. When dispersion occurs, soil structure may collapse resulting in a reduction of macropores and oftentimes an increase in soil bulk density. A similar dynamic occurs in the presence of excessive magnesium. But, when calcium is replaced by magnesium, the clays do not disperse due to the lack of charge because both elements have two positive charges. In the case of magnesium, the platelets disperse because the hydration radius of magnesium is slightly larger, and the bare ion radius is slightly smaller than calcium. This means the distance between the positive charge of the element, and the negative charge of the clay, is slightly greater with magnesium than with calcium, and correspondingly, the strength of the bond between the element and the clay, is less. To this end, clay dispersion can occur when magnesium levels are too great. However, it is very important to place this information within the context of turfgrass soil systems. Sodic and magnesium saturated soils are rare, and dispersion only occurs when two criteria are met. First, both soils must have sufficient quantities of clays, and second, the soil must have sufficient quantities of either sodium or magnesium. If either one of these criteria are not met, then purchasing and applying gypsum is a futile effort. The criteria for sodic soils are fairly well established. So, the best approach to confirming whether you have a sodic soil is to follow the recommendations of your soil test. With magnesium it is less clear, and this ambiguity provides ideal growing conditions for bullshitters to take advantage of you. It has been shown that in order for magnesium to be a concern, the soil may require magnesium in excess of 50% of the exchange site, which is unrealistic for field soils. Meaning, this has been measured in the laboratory but would rarely if ever, be encountered in real-world situations. So don't be fooled by bullshitters who claim to have a solution to soil compaction, unless it has been independently confirmed by someone who is not in a position to benefit from the results. What is the best management practice for dealing with soil compaction? In a practical sense, soil cultivation is the most reliable method to alleviate soil compaction. Soil cultivation techniques include aerifying, slicing, spiking, water injection, or other means of physically altering the root zone including top dressing. Aerification is perhaps the most common and useful method to alleviate compaction. Holotine aerification involves the removal of a core of soil. In compacted soils, the bulk density may exceed 1.8 grams per cubic centimeter. When the aerification hole is refilled by either top dressing or dragging back in the cores, the soil that settles back into the hole will have a lower bulk density than the removed core. When this is repeated enough times, this will lower the bulk density of the compacted soil. Although soil cultivation may alleviate soil compaction, it is critical to understand that soil cultivation degrades soil structure, and long-term cultivation may create a downward spiral. No. Not that downward spiral. Only Trent can create that one. We mean a downward spiral of cultivation and compaction. Compaction is alleviated by cultivation. Cultivation may degrade structure. Degradation of structure increases compaction. And around and around we go. For this reason, soil cultivation should be performed as little as possible and only in locations where it is necessary to alleviate stress to the turf grass. Products like liquid aeration are only useful in providing you with a clear indication that you are dealing with a bullshitter. Well, the first season of Turf Truth Tuesdays is all done and dusted. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed making it. If you have any claims you would like to see us address, please add a comment to the video or you can find us on Twitter at Turf Truth. We greatly appreciate everyone for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe so you will be notified when Season 2 is released. Have a great week and we will see you again soon.